what's the role of the wrist forearms? What are they doing post impact? If you've missed our release videos, and I've made a few of them, they're in the description. Hit one of the links below to see what happens actually when we're releasing. Today's video, though, is once we've hit the ball, what are the wrists and forearms doing post impact? <laughs> So there are a few options post-impact. Ideally, we've said for a long time that when the hands get about waist high, we should see a straight line from the lead shoulder to the end of the golf club. After that point, we've got a few options, and we're going to cover all three options. First option is what I call a swivel, okay? Where one forearm, because my right arm actually runs out of room, and my left wrist is uncocking and flexing, the natural position after this would be to continue and swivel. I think a lot of people have a misconception that they're trying to swivel where the ball is, and that is not what we want to have happen. So we want to create that straight line condition post impact. From there, we have three options. Option one is for the forearms to swivel. Note that you can see that my forearms are the thing that's working. I don't want to see someone use their whole body just to try and get their forearms to swivel, okay? So if you were to tilt the spine, turn it, put the club in your hand, you should be able to retain that tilt and swivel the forearms. Option number two, we see uh, Bryson do this a little bit where the swivel doesn't really occur until way later, but we'll see the lead arm when the hands are about waist high, maybe even closer to sternum high, the lead arm starts to bend. Arya Jatunagard would also do that. Okay, so the swivel, really the lead arm starts to bend first, the swivel happens later. Then the third option is what we call the recock. Okay, so we've got swivel, left arm bend, and then recock. Any combination of those three is fine. Just note that the ball is already gone. And a lot of times what's happening with the wrist conditions at impact then dictates what's going to happen post impact. Your grip would play an influence. We see that players with a little weaker grip, they tend to flex more. They're the ones that tend to use their elbow first Players whose pelvis or legs stop turning, they tend to rotate the forearms after impact a little sooner. But ideally, if we can get you to continue to turn through the shot, what we'll show you is that the wrists, forearms will swivel over, but it'll happen well after the golf ball. So let's take a look at post-impact. This is Dustin Johnson on the uh, left. He's hitting a uh, mid-iron. There's our lowercase letter Y geometry. This is Rory McIlroy on the right. These are great videos put out by TaylorMade. So pl special plug to them. Again, lowercase letter Y, when I say that, I'm just connecting the lead shoulder to the lead wrist, getting the golf club, connecting the right arm. So you can clearly see the lowercase letter Y that I'm talking about. But we'll notice a couple things here. As DJ goes through the ball, his knees and his pelvis continue to move, and you can see how long that left wrist stays nice and flat going through impact, and any swivel won't happen until way out here, okay? So now the club is about parallel to the ground, and we'll, what we'll see with Rory, because his knees and his pelvis stopped turning, his range of motion, so I just want you to see, he is turning, coming into the ball, that's where he does get a lot of power, 
both the push up from the ground and the rotation. You can see how his belt is raising, so he's pushing off the ground and he's turning, but he has a little stall with his knees and his pelvis right after impact, and that forces his forearms to rotate a little sooner. So the big difference here, if I just, you can see how Rory's glove is on the bottom where DJ's glove is on the top. And again, I kind of like the later the crossover, the better. And then if we look at that from another view, you can see how turned DJ is versus how the pelvis kind of stalls and the knees kind of stall for Rory. Again, what your body does will help to dictate what the arms do. This is a good clip. This is a good clip of Arya Jatunagard. And I like showing people that pamphlet or booklet in her back pocket. You can see how much that thing is turning, 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 getting out of the way. Again, when the body turns as much as she does, that allows for that radius to stay as long as possible. So way out here, she keeps her arms very straight, doesn't per se cross over, and now you'll see the elbows start to bend in. Again, maintaining that radius is key. That left arm, she's one of the long, she keeps her left arm longer than most people. The wrists then cross over well after where most people would, and then the elbow folds up. John Rahm on the left, Bryson on the right. Both have their lowercase letter Y through impact. Note that the ball. Note that the ball is gone when Rom continues to rotate the forearms. And you can see when the club is parallel to the ground that his glove is on the bottom. Then in Bryson's case, the glove stays on top a little bit longer and you'll see how the left elbow starts to bend as the forearms cross over one another. So again, the crossover, you know, in my teaching, I really like the crossover happening later and later. And you can see how different the position of the arms and elbows would be when the club gets well above parallel to the ground. What we see with the people that swivel very different look uh, post-impact, certainly in the shoulder joint and in the elbow joint. And then I think it's important to differentiate a wedge from a driver. So you can see how stable the wrist conditions are, how long he's maintaining that lowercase letter Y. Left wrist is nice and stable. So again, what happens post impact is going to be a little bit different for uh, your distance control wedges than it would be for driving the golf ball. As, as Bryson continues to hold on to that, you'll see how his left elbow will start to bend and he never really rotates never really uh, rotates his forearms. He maintains some bend in that right wrist. And that then leads to a nice soft little bend. Soft little bend right at the end with his left elbow. So I hope this video helped. Again, just remember that the ball is gone at that point and there will be a difference between hitting a 60 yard or an 80 yard wedge shot versus hitting an all out driver. And there are combinations 
that will uh, work for each type of swing. For Impact Snap, I'm Marty Nowicki. I hope this video helped. Please like this video, share this video, leave your comments down below. That helps us to create more content for you. For Impact Snap, I'm Marty Nowicki. Thanks for watching.